So the title of this morning's little presentation is a testimony, a uh, dream, and Ezekiel's vision. So I thought I would start out with just saying, giving you a little bit of background on what happened to me when I, as I came in to the movement again here in March. And uh, I'm sorry if I'm kind of stumbling, I'm just a little nervous, but back in March, when, you know, the pandemic was hitting and everything, we went through a little um, harrowing experience here in my family. My, uh, my daughter and her husband were traveling in Mexico just as they were beginning to shut down all of the, the airlines and stuff and starting to do that. So, and when she got down there, she had some uh, anxiety and ended up in the hospital. So when this happened and seeing everything that was going on in the world, I really came under the conviction, you know, that the Lord was, that this was the beginning of Jesus coming, you know, this worldwide pandemic, this sickness that was impacting every country in the world. And uh, so I began to pray and ended up having to go down to, to Mexico and, and deal with that and try to get back here before the country was shut down, not knowing whether we could or couldn't fly and, and all of that. So I was praying without ceasing for my daughter and everything to do with that. And so then as, as I got home, um, you know, I continued to pray and, you know, I read through, I think it was in early writings where Sister White talks about how she prayed for her forgiveness of her sins and then for unmistakable evidence that she was accepted. And after reading that, I, I took up that prayer as well for myself, you know, that I could have unmistakable evidence, um, Lord. And so I began to study, and that's when I started to watch, you know, Future for America's videos again after being gone for many years and started to see the things that were being taught. And just a little bit of background again for me is that, you know, I do, I'm in construction, I do seamless gutters and uh, the name of my business is Providence and on all my cards and stuff, I always have Romans eight twenty eight. you know, all things work together for good to them who love God, who are called according to his purpose. And it's been my experience through my life as I become a Christian to when I see God working during the day, even at work, you know, I'll pick up a, a downspout and need a certain measurement and pick it up. And there it is, that exact measurement. It's just, um, re, it's always my reaction just to thank God, you know, well, praise God. Thank you, Lord, you know, for that downspout that's already cut to the length that I needed, you know, or if I lose something and walk around the corner, oh, there it is. Well, thank you, Lord. You know, that's just my reaction to everything. So as, as we, as I started to study and see the, you know, the timelines and, and all of that stuff, you know, it's very interesting. And I, we entered the shutdown on the, you know, in March there for nine weeks, but we had some local jobs to do just around the corner from our house. And I thought, you know, it's only a mile or two away from my house. And so I would go to do those without going out, you know, into the cities or anything. And so one day we were doing this job around the corner from us. And it was two pole barns that were two neighbors that uh, live right next to each other. And so we went in there, we were doing these two pole barns and the neighbor came over and wanted an estimate for his pole barn. And I told him, sure, you know, after we're done here, I'll come over and look at that. Um, and so after we got done working, I went over to his place 
and got out and said, okay, I'll be just a minute. And I go around the, the perimeter of the pole building and measure it up. And, and then I start to do my figures and write it down on, you know, a blank estimate pad. And the, I add it all up and it come to $888. And, you know, not like it's a huge thing that you're going to go tell the world about, but just in my mind, like I'm telling you, you know, when I see something like that, I'm like, oh, well, that's kind of neat. Praise the Lord. I mean, then in the eight, you know, as a symbol of resurrection, I was thinking in my head, you know, even, you know, during this whole time, I'm still praying, you know, the, the Lord will accept me. And to think that maybe that was a, just a neat little thing that, that represented resurrection from being dead in trespasses and sins to me was kind of neat. So then I walk up to the customer and I say, okay, um, I need, what's your address here? And then he says, it's 77721 McKee Street. And this now I'm, you know, after seeing the, the 777 line at midnight and all that stuff, you know, it's just another one of those things that was like, oh, wow, that's kind of neat. And so I wrote his address down. And the other thing that I've been praying about at this time, when I come back into the message, you know, there's so many videos and so much information to go through. Where do I start? And I think even in the email that I first sent to Jason um, or Jeff that, uh, you know, where, where should I start? And so he gave me his phone number and the one, you know, the first three digits, the last four digits of his phone number was 1798. So it was another neat little thing. Okay. I had a place to start. I wasn't thinking all this right at this time, but of course I noticed the number 1798. And then, then for the final thing was the, I had to fill in his name and it says, and what is your name? And his name was Michael, Michael Vets. So I wrote it down and give him it up, gave him his estimate and was on my merry way. And I mean, still to this day, it's, it's kind of interesting to me that all these numbers and the customer's name, Michael Vets, as if Michael could be vetting, you know, me to be able to accept me again. You know what I mean? So go on my merry way from there. And the guy calls up and says that he wants us to do the job. And I'm studying and learning more. And we're beginning to find out um, the things that happen on March 27th. You know, the Seventh-day Adventist Church, you know, declaring the 100 days of prayer on March 27th. And, and then we come to find out later that, you know, that comet Neowise, you know, they discovered it on 327. And as I started to understand those things, then it thought, well, what day was it? that we were there doing that job. And so I went back and I took out that his estimate. And sure enough, the day that I was there was March 27th. That was the day that we did that job. And then once I saw that, I started to look a little closer in the two pole buildings that we did for the customer that I was working on that day before I did the guy's estimate. They were two pole barns sitting side by side. They were exactly the same. Same siding, same roofing, all the same colors, same length, same height. And these two neighbors, because they put them next to each other, they decided to make them exactly the same, even though they were two different owners. I thought that was interesting because then now it was like a doubling there. You know, I even stopped and took a picture of them because at that point I'm thinking, wow, this is, you know, interesting. You know, thank you, Lord. Like, and, and then there's a couple of more interesting things about those pole barns. The pole barns are actually, they were a little over 62 feet long. So for the billing, I charged 63 for 63 feet because I charged by the foot. So you have two pole barns with a piece of gutter on each side that are 63 feet apiece. So each barn has 126 feet of gutter 
And so together there's 252 feet of gutter between these two pole barns. And there's eight downspouts. But so in my mind, it was quite interesting to say the least. And so I thought at that point and even before that the Lord had answered my prayer and given me just a personal, unmistakable evidence that I had been accepted as, you know, back into his fold. And so I went from there praising God. And again, I mean, I didn't bring it up really. I told my friend Eric but, about it, but but I didn't think you know too much about it because, you know, again, it's just it's um, a bunch of numbers and my experience at this time, I thought it was just like a personal testimony to me, you know, that still small voice that gives you that evidence that that I was accepted to him. So let's fast forward now to um, a week before I was going to do the remarks in October. So I've been studying Ezekiel for quite a while, and I mean for years, but then putting this together, you know, seeing some new things. And I was studying, I was thinking about it day and night, any chance that I could even dwell on it during the day when even while I was working, you know, I was running through, you know, that Ezekiel chapter one in my head. And I would wake up in the early in the morning thinking about it too. And so on October 10th, a week before I was going to do the remarks on the 17th, I woke up at four o'clock, 4.30 in the morning. And as I lay there in bed, I'm going over and over and over this in my head. And as I was going over the, that scripture, I must have fell back asleep because then I found myself having a dream. And that's very rare for me. So I find myself in this dream, and I'll try to describe this to you as best as I can. Um, so I walk into this room in this dream and it's like I'm walking into a, a house that we're working on. You know, I'm doing, I do construction. So this is, it's not an odd thing that I would walk into a, a building site that they're building a new home. And I walk into this, this room and it's white everywhere, but I notice the ceiling in the middle of the ceiling. There's these like antique boards like an old Victorian house that they're trying to keep part of the ornate ceiling and they're up there in a square and, but they're connected back behind my head, but my view is forward like this. And so I'm like, well, this is interesting. And I begin to walk to the left and here's the owner of the house and the owner of the house, he says, so how's it going? as if to ask about our progress on the house. And, and I'm confused because uh, here I'm in the house and I'm trying to think, well, what am I doing here? And at that point, then it's like a, almost like a memory at the time of me working on a house outside, like we're doing the siding. And my job was to blend in the old siding with the new. So we're, we're working on this rehab house and, and putting new siding on it and, and blending it in. So I'm like, oh, it's going good. And but I'll go check on it for you, you know. And the thing about the owner of the house was is his bearing. He was, you know, I deal with customers every day, and you begin to, you know guess how people will react toward you and this this owner of the house so kind he had a a uh, his expression on his face was just like a smile but like nothing could trouble him and he was just happy to to get the information from me you know to you know so like whatever was our progress was good you know it was just his countenance and and everything it was it was joyful, you know, we're happy. But so 
I turn from him, going to go check on the progress. And out in front of me, there's, there's two doors. One that goes up a few stairs to the left, and there's a door there. And there's another door up to the right, and it was higher, like a full story that you would go up a flight of stairs to that door. So I quick, this one was closer, so I, I walked up these stairs and I opened this door. And you couldn't go through this door. There was, there was like a wall built in front of it this way, and then another wall that came this way. And you couldn't hardly even see through that door because of the walls that were blocking the way. And as I saw this, then I was so embarrassed because I mean, it's like trying to leave a room and you walk into the closet. You know, I was embarrassed and the, the owner of the house was watching me. So what would he think of me? I, I've been working here and I didn't know that I couldn't go through this door. So I shut the door and I walked back down the stairs and I, I start to go up the other stairs. And as I was about to open that door, I caught out of the corner of my eye through the window, um, my nephew, he was outside working there. And he works with me every day. So I was like, okay, I'm going to go back down around and talk to him and see how it's going to get the, the report on the progress. So I started down the stairs. And as I came down the stairs, there on the floor was my daughter. She was laying on the floor. But... She was like up on her, on her uh, elbows like this. And I'm sorry, but <clears throat> the owner of the house was there with her, and he was down on the floor with her, holding her hands. I'm sorry. Um. So he had her in his hands. And at that point, you know, I thought, yeah, I didn't know what to make of this, you know, in, while I was dreaming. But as soon as I, I saw that and I understood it, then there was a commotion and behind me. So back up, I noticed the, the ceiling. The ceiling was shaking. All these boards, they were coming apart. And I noticed there was, there was like one um, support that was way on an angle. You know, if you build something, you build a support underneath it and you put it straight up and down. But the support that was somebody had tried to put under the corner of these boards was way out on an angle. And so I got underneath it and with my back, and I'm trying to hold this ceiling on. And it's just shaking all over the place. And I call for my sons um, to come and help me and help me. And then that was it. And then I woke up. And as soon as I woke up, I, I understood what it was with my daughter on the floor. And I, I believed at that moment that the Lord had given me a dream. That he had answered my prayer, you know, back in March as I began to pray for my daughter. And that, you know, I've tried to help, you know, so many times, but that he has got her in his hands and is helping her. Even maybe I don't see it on the outside, but but he's got her in his hands. Now that morning was the same morning that that uh, that Bronwyn mentioned her family in, in prayer, and I just, and I wanted to share it at that time too because you know I feel the same way about my family that. You know, the Lord needs to help us all. But even though we can't see it, you know, he's there and he's, and he's helping us. You know, he's got our families in his hand. 
And as long as we're faithful, I don't know if there's some way that he can honor us and, and save them as well. But he has the power. So that was that portion. That was the dream. And now another to pick up a little bit where I left off in Ezekiel. You know, remember Ezekiel chapter 1 and, and 2 um, that I talked about on the 17th of October. Um, if you didn't see it, I mean, I would, I would look at it if I were you, but, um, but now I'm going to go through from chapter 3. I wanted to do chapter 9 and 10, but between the 17th and now, there's a lot of other things that have, that have come up that I'd like to show you here. So in Ezekiel chapter 3, verse 1, I'll just read a couple of verses here. Moreover, he said unto me, Son of man, eat that thou findest, eat this roll, and go speak unto the house of Israel. So I opened my mouth, and he caused me to eat that roll. And he said unto me, Son of man, cause thy belly to eat, and fill thy bowels with this roll that I give thee. Then did I eat it, and it was in my mouth as honey for sweetness. And he said unto me, Son of man, go get thee unto the house of Israel, and speak with my words unto them. So here we see again, you know, just like we've talked so many times about bringing the message of, of July 18th to the Adventist Church, to Nashville. Um, we ate the roll, the movement did, and, and gave them the warning. Now, if we move down, I'm going to be skipping down to, for time to try to finish this out, go to verse 12. Then the Spirit took me up, and I heard behind me a voice of a great rushing, saying, Blessed be the glory of the Lord from his place. Now here, here, if you look at these words, first off, even Jeff has alluded to in one of his presentations that you know, I heard behind me a voice of a great rushing. The behind me, it's like the light that's set up behind us, the, the midnight cry and the Millerite movement that, you know, we hear behind us a voice. Now, this voice, if you look at the, the meaning of that word there, coal, or I think is how you pronounce that, it's, it can also be a cry and great Great, the meaning of the word there is either older or elder, and rushing is a shaking. So if we read that as we heard behind us the cry of an older rushing or an elder rushing, saying, blessed be the glory of the Lord from his place. And we know that the light that shines upon our past, from the past to even into our future, is that light that was set up behind us, the blessing that comes from the glory that we have have gotten from that light that comes from the sanctuary when we found out that October 22nd was when Jesus moved from the holy to the most holy. So that light from there is blessing our pathway. And of course, that's from his place. The sanctuary is his place. 313, I heard also the noise of the wings of the living creatures that touched one another and the noise of the wheels over against them and the noise of a great rushing. So here we see that we hear again the noise, the cry, the cry of the wings of the living creatures that touched one another. And if you look back into chapter one, that's God's voice. You know, the, it's verse 124 where it says, and when they went, I heard the noise of the wings, their wings, like the noise of great waters, as the voice of the Almighty, the voice of speech, as the noise of an host. So, so in this verse, Ezekiel hears God's voice, the message from God, and the noise of the wheels. Now, we are the wheels. We are the, the ones that at the end that we get lifted up with, with the angels to go to heaven. And 
it's not only the complicated play of human events as you, we see them on the lines, but it's our events. We're in the midst of these, and so we are the wheels. And the noise of the wheels over against them, it, that was the, the cry of the wheels. So that's, that was our cry that we gave about July 18th. It may even be the, the midnight cry that's coming for the, the Sunday law. I don't know. And a noise of a great rushing. And again, we see the repetition of the, the cry of the elder shaking. So we see that, again, it's all three. It's God's voice along with us and the repetition of that great rushing from the, the Millerite movement. So the spirit lifted me up and took me away, and I went in bitterness in the heat of my spirit, but the hand of the Lord was strong upon me. So Ezekiel sees all of this happen. He sees this disappointment. And so he goes away in bitterness in the heat or anger of his spirit because he sees what happened. I mean, just like for us, when this disappointment comes, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, if someone was, you know, angry that we upset. We had a little displeasure because what we thought was going to happen did not happen. And it seemed like we were lied to. Like the, the vision, the, the 26th day of the fourth month over and over and over again pointed directly to that date, but then it wasn't so. So we went away in the heat of our spirit, angry. Hey, Dan. Our now that you have like two minutes left. Two minutes left? Okay. I'll fast forward right through. Um, in Ezekiel 4, now it tells of the coming siege. You know, there's the prophecy of the um, 390 years, the 977 to 587, and the 627 to 587 of the 40 years. And I'll skip over the what I was going to read. I'll give you those. Next time, I mean, there's Prophets and Kings, page 448.1, and page 450, um, one through three paragraphs. And this brings us down to Ezekiel 8, chapter 1. You know, the whole, this, the prophecy of the coming siege, it's like four, five, six, seven, and eight. It's those chapters. And what I want to show coming to Ezekiel 4, 4 through 7, is where the 390 days is prophesied. Now, if we back up and look at Ezekiel 3, verses 22 through 26, it says this. And the hand of the Lord was there upon me, and he said unto me, Arise, go forth into the plain, and I will there talk with thee. Then I arose and went forth into the plain, and behold, the glory of the Lord stood there as the glory which I saw by the river of Shebar. And I fell on my face. Then the Spirit entered me and set me upon my feet, and he spake with me and said unto me, Go shut thyself within thine house. But thou, O son of man, behold, they shall put bands on thee and shall bind thee with them, and thou shalt not go out among them. And I will make thy tongue cleave to the roof of thy mouth, and thou shalt be dumb, and shalt not be to them a reprover, for they are a rebellious house. Now here, what I see is an interesting parallel, is that once we give that, that message of 718, July 18th, that Ezekiel or goes and shuts himself in his house and his tongue is cleaving to the roof of his mouth. He cannot speak. It's so similar to what I see has happened with us. Jeff has been nowhere to give us any more instruction. It's as if his tongue is cleaving to the roof of his mouth. And so the Lord has been silent to us and not giving us 
that direction that we need. And then in, into following along into chapter four, we see the prophecy of the 390 days. And if we take that, from 718 and we go 390 days it takes us to what we find in in Ezekiel chapter 8 verse 1 in the fifth day of the sixth month it seems that God again talks to Ezekiel that fifth day of the sixth month is actually next year. On eight thirteen twenty one. Very interesting that it that it shows up that same day in the Hebrew calendar, the fifth day of the sixth month, three hundred and ninety days from July eighteenth, and then now. To give you one more witness, from March 27th um, of this year, 20, until, until 8-13-21 is 504 days. which is 252 and 252. So there's a chiasm from, from March 27th to 8, 13, 2021. And the date in the center here is where we stand. which is today. Today is 12-5-20. Reaching out in front of us, there's 252 days to 8-13, and behind us, there's 252 days to March 27th. So. Daniel? Yes. What, what are you saying is going to happen on that date? will hit the fifth day of the sixth month. What does that mean? We'll see. So we're, you're, you're using this structure to say something's going to happen on that date in the future, though? Yes. This, and the structure is there. It's, you know, in... There's symbolism running all the way through it. All right, and what does that mean? We got to shut it down. The coming siege. Ezekiel 4. Let's, uh, I guess we need to end. Um, we'll have a prayer. Let us pray. Dear gracious Heavenly Father, there he was predicting a future or something. I'm gonna. I have a whole sermon. Mm -hmm. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this time to come together. I pray that as we go from this moment, that your Holy Spirit will lead us all into what is the truth. I pray that you help us to understand and be with us this day. In Jesus' name, amen.